Let's do that tonight. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and love Him. That's right. Lift your hands and lift your voices to Him and let Him know how much you love Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Let's take some time and praise Him. Let's worship Him and glorify His name for He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. That's right. Let's take some time and praise Him. Lord, we love you. Lift your voice out loud. Amen. It's church time. Let's praise Him and give Him the glory that's due His name tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's right. Let's do that a little bit more. Come on. Let's praise Him some more. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I think we can step a little bit further. I think you got more to give God right now than what you are. Lord, I praise you. I worship you. I glorify your name. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. We're going to take some time. You can call it a praise break. You can talk, call it a prayer break. Whatever you want to call it is fine, but it's time to talk to Jesus. I love you, Lord. I praise you, God. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Amen. As you continue to stand for just a few more moments, we're going to bring the man of God. Amen. It's good to feel the presence of the Lord here, and it's certainly good to see all of you in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you so much, wherever you've come from. We're so glad that you're here. Amen. Good to have these young men from Knoxville, Tennessee. I think they drove in for church and turned around and driving home to be at home church in the morning. So, amen. I appreciate them coming a long way to be here. Let's give them a good hand as well of all, as all of our guests. Thank you so much. Amen. What a wonderful presence of the Lord that's in this place. Amen. Why don't you just do me a favor? Why don't you close your eyes and lift your hands all over this place? And while your hands are up, why don't you say, God, I want you to preach to me. God, I want you to talk to me. God, I want to hear a word from you. I want your word to impact my heart and my life. God, help me to be good ground for the seed of your word to come into my heart, to come into my life. Oh, hallelujah. Now, why don't you lay your hand on somebody close to you and pray one for another and pray that God's will be done in their life. Pray the blessing of the Lord on them. Amen. God's getting ready to do something in this place tonight. And I want to make sure that we're ready to receive what the word of the Lord and what the spirit of the Lord has for us. Come on, let's pray. Lift your voices and pray. There's no reason to be intimidated to open your mouth out loud and praise God. The devil would like to shut your voice up tonight. But I wish you'd lift your voice in prayer right now. And lift your voice in prayer and praise and let the devil know that you're not going to be silenced. You're not going to let your voice be taken away. God, I praise you tonight. God, I, come on, lift your voice. We're not going to move on till you start lifting your voice and begin to audibly praise God out loud. We're not going to move on. God, I praise you. I worship you. I magnify your name. God, I lift you up. God, I lift you up. We're not moving on till I can hear you better. I want you to raise your voice in worship to God right now. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Make a joyful noise. Praise him with the loud voice, the Bible said. God, we're breaking that intimidation out of here tonight. We refuse. We refuse to settle and be silent. When the world is out loudly partying and shouting at ball games and bar rooms, I refuse to be silenced in the house of God. I refuse to be quiet in my worship. While people are worshiping the devil at the loudest volume they can, I refuse to let my voice be silenced tonight. I praise you, God. I worship you, Lord. I magnify your name. Oh, hallelujah. Haven't you enjoyed the ministry of Brother Whitley tonight, or last night. What a great word we're going to hear in just a few moments from this man of God. And we're so honored to have him and uh, Easton and Sister Ashley with us tonight. Looking forward to a great time tomorrow morning and tomorrow night as well. Amen. We're looking forward to what God has in store tonight. God has something special 
in store for this place tonight. Amen. Put your hands together and welcome the man of God, our General Youth Secretary, Brother Nate Whitley. Somebody lift him up just one more time. Somebody just say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Just say, I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 14. Matthew 14, as you're turning there, I want to give honor to one of my heroes tonight. I don't know where I would be had it not been for Pastor John Voskis. We affectionately call him Brother V. I honor him so very much, and I know this church and these young people. Don't you love Brother V? Don't you love Pastor Vasquez? Don't you love what he does for this church and for the kingdom? I give honor tonight to Brother Austin Hughes doing a wonderful, wonderful job leading your student ministry here at Bethlehem Church. And I give him honor and his wife honor. I had a great time with fellowship with them today. They took me to my favorite number one hamburger place in all the world. It's not, it's not McDonald's. It's not Five Guys. It's not, uh, it's not Shake Shack, though it's in the top five. My number one hamburger place in all the world is Phillips Grocery in Holly Springs. If you've never had Phillips Hamburger, you owe it to yourself before you go to heaven to get a hamburger from Phillips. It is the best hamburger you can possibly have. And they took me there today, and I give them honor. Thank you so very much. And I appreciate what they're doing. Matthew chapter number 14. And let me say I am so honored to have Dom and Taylor with us today. I walked in, sat over there, and I said, those guys look familiar. <laughs> and they drove all the way here, uh, and then they're going to drive all the way home so they can be on time for church in the morning. Amen? Dom is going to speak in the morning to our students, and uh, he's a very talented young man. As is Brother Taylor, one of our, both of these are our young ministers in our young ministers training and doing a great job ministering from the kingdom and what God's doing for them. I'm very excited. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm honored to have my friends here with us. Matthew 14, beginning at verse number 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. Someone said the other side. While he sent the multitudes away. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, someone say the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, and wouldn't you be troubled if you seen something walking on the water? And they said this, what we would say, it is a spirit or it is a ghost. And then they would do what we would do. They cried out, afraid because that's what we would do right but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid Peter answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when Peter was come out come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to Jesus look at verse 30 but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And look at this little phrase here. It's very important that we see how this is phrased. And beginning to sink. He wasn't sink, he wasn't sunk. He was beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? I want to preach to you tonight with your help and the help of the Lord. Sinking in familiar waters. Sinking in familiar waters. Why don't you lift up your hands and just pray one more time tonight. Lord, we need your word. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us through your spirit. Lord, open up every heart of every student here. Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to see and take account of where we are right now, where we are 
physically standing, Lord, where we are in you. And I pray, God, that your spirit would begin to move upon us, to cry out unto you, to walk out in faith to where you are, and to believe that there's greater things ahead for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't you clap your hands again tonight? And then turn around, shake somebody's hand, high five them, give them a fist bump. If it's appropriate, give them a fist bump or two. So you're looking good and you can be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You are looking good. Sinking in familiar waters. The Sea of Galilee is a body of water in Israel. It is fed by the Jordan River, rainfall, and springs from the northern side of the area. Its shores grace the areas of Bethsaida, Capernaum, and Genesaret, and many other familiar areas in Scripture. It is called a sea, but it's really more like a lake. It is 13 miles long and only 7 miles wide. Its deepest point in the lake is only 150 feet deep. So when we read that Jesus tells his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side, this is not a far journey for them, being that it's only 7 miles wide and 13 miles long. And here at this body of water, this small body of water, a miracle takes place. And we know this story of Jesus walking on the water, and we know the story of Peter walking on the water. But I want us to focus on Peter just for a few moments. Because if we miss the importance of the background of a story, a story isn't a story unless it has some background and some context. You know, a good story has a, a scenery. It sets it up. Have you ever been to a play? ever been to Broadway and you see a change of scenery it's trying to get you to understand what's happening here and if you miss the scenery you miss what's happening in the narrative well Peter is involved with this scenery and we're gonna put him there we're gonna build around him to see and understand the significance of Peter walking on water now Peter is from this area he's very familiar with this area it's the first time when we meet Peter in Scripture that Jesus comes walking by Peter and his brother Andrew at the Sea of Galilee. Matthew 4 and 18 says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Peter was a fisherman. He was a son of a fisherman. His brother was a fisherman. He was quiet the fisherman. And even in Luke chapter number 5, it said that he even owned his own boat. He's made his living fishing. Some of y'all are wishing you could make a living being a fisherman. I went fishing a few times with my dad when I was younger. I just never got uh, used to just grabbing onto those slimy worms. I just, I just, I just, just, just couldn't do it. And then when you caught something that was more slime, I'm just, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll, how about you just catch it for me and cook it and I'll eat it. How about that? Uh, but there are some who just enjoy fishing and there are those who make a living being fishermen. Well, such was Peter. Well, according to John 1 44, Mark 1 29, Peter was from Bethsaida, which was on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. He's made his living in the waters. He's grown up on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law near the Sea of Galilee. He's familiar here. I mean, everything about the Sea of Galilee is familiar to Peter. Perhaps that's where he met his wife. That's where he walked the shores along the waters and he, he began to, you know, say, man... You smell like a red snapper. I hope he wouldn't say that, you know. Man, I just, man, I just like being around you. And 
you smell a lot better than fish. Brothers, please don't say that about the girl you're trying to court. But I can imagine he's holding her hands, walking on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Over there, yeah, that's my boat. Yeah, that's my boat. And, and that's what I, you know, he's trying to show her all the good spots to go fishing. He's, he's, he knows everything about this place because this is where he grew up. This is where he's made his living. This is where he has provided for his family. He knows everything there is to know about the Sea of Galilee. He knew where to catch the best fish. He knew the places to avoid if you're wanting to catch fish. He knew of all the terrible historic storms and that Sea of Galilee. He knew of all the tragic events that, that happened in the history of the Sea of Galilee. So when Jesus tells Peter and the disciples to go towards Bethsaida in this boat, Peter's like, let me show you around, guys. I hop in my boat. I'll show you all around the sea here. I know where we're going here. I, I, you don't need a map. I'll, we'll, I'll get us there. <clears throat> I'm from Bloomington, Indiana. When I go home, when I go home, there's just some spots I like to go to. There's just some places I like to go. There's just some things I'm, I'm familiar with. When someone says, I had uh, Brother Michael Maupin text me uh, this week, and he was at one of my favorite spots in Bloomington, and I told him what to order. I told him what to get for a side. Then I said, after you're done there, here's the place to go get some donuts, and then in the morning, make sure you get up and go to this spot for breakfast. But, ah, it's my hometown, right? And when you get to your hometown, everything's familiar. You don't need a GPS in your hometown. Well, unless you're me, because I'm directionally challenged, and I always have to make a U-turn. I've missed the exit. I've missed my turn. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in here? Listen, you can go down this road right here. This is one road, and I can get lost on that road, you know. And, and, but Peter knows all, the, all about the Sea of Galilee. He knows about Bethsaida. He knows all the great spots to eat. He knows all the great, the, all the great places to go shop. He can tell you everything there is to know about Bethsaida. He can tell you everything you need to know about the Sea of Galilee. He is the kind of guy you hate to be around when you're somewhere because he's always talking about it. Let me tell you about this place. Let me tell you about this happened. This happened here. Oh, 15 years ago, this storm took place. Oh, let me tell you about 12 years ago, so-and-so lost their boat in this situation. He's familiar with the Sea of Galilee. So when Jesus says, go to the other side, I can just imagine Peter's just out there going, let's go. Oh, uh, this is the right, yeah, this is the right, this is just the right wind to get over there. We should get there in 15 clicks or 50, whatever they say in fishermen or, or sailing lingo. And he can just tell you all about it. But here's what happens. A storm comes. And here are some things in the storm that Peter has never experienced before. Here is a storm, and perhaps he had been familiar with other storms. Perhaps he has been familiar with the waves crashing against the boat. Perhaps he's been familiar of great uh, of a boat capsizing of some sort. He, he's, he's experienced it all on those waters, but there are some things he had never seen before. Somebody walking on the water. Now, he'd seen every type of fish caught there. He could tell you all about the storms and the boats, but he had never seen a man walking on the water in those familiar waters. And so he looked out there along with all of his friends in the boat, and he said, uh, boys, we got trouble coming. We know we got trouble coming. There's a storm going on. There's a storm. Just, just stay inside. No, it's worse than a storm. What's worse than a storm? There is a ghost walking on the water in the storm. I've, I've been here my whole life. I've been coming to these waters since I was a little boy. I've raised myself around here, but there's just something, you know what? I'm tired of familiar prayer meetings. I'm tired of familiar church services. I'm, I'm tired of familiar worship services. I'm tired of going through the motions. You know what I want to see? I want to see Jesus do something and mess my church up, mess my world up, and I'm saying, oh my Lord, I've never seen this before. I've never seen the dead raised before. I've never seen somebody heal a cancer before. But he can do it if I'll just get my eyes. I wish somebody would help me tonight. Come on, you know what we need in our, in our youth group? We need God to mess up our familiarity. We need God to mess up what we're content with. We need him to show up and say, I don't know what he's doing here, but I want to be a part of it. Come on. 
We shouldn't just show up to, to, to Sunday morning, Sunday night service, just expect this hope and we get out early. That's the necessary, that's, uh, some people come to, just with enough faith. My only hope tonight is that we get out early. That's all I want to, I just hope we don't preach long. That's the only faith that they've got. The disciples just hope to make it to the other side. I just hope we make it. There's some who are in churches hoping they make it. I've been here so long, I just hope we make it to the other side. I've seen storms before, but I just hope we make it. And here comes Jesus going, messing your world up, messing your world up. You've never seen this before. I hope you want to do what I'm doing. And Peter looks out there in the familiar waters going, I've never seen this before. I've never experienced before. But Jesus, if that's you, let me put my foot, my foot out there in the water. Lord, if that's you, come on. If he's going to work miracles, I want to be there. If he's going to answer prayers, I want to be there. If he's going to raise the dead, I want to be there. I don't want to stay in the boat. I don't want to be in familiarity. I want to go where Jesus is. I wish somebody had clapped their hands. I wish some student would lift up their voice and say, I'm tired of dry service. I'm tired of dead you service. I want to go where Jesus is. Come on. Come on, we need somebody to lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. We need somebody to turn around and prophesy in the Holy Ghost. I've never done it before, but I believe he's calling me. I've never seen it before, but I believe he's calling me. Let me go out there. Let me see it. Let me do it. Somebody shout, yes. Some young person who's tired of just going through the motions, say yes. Somebody who wants to see revival, say yes. Somebody who wants to get out of the boat, say yes. Somebody who wants to see Jesus, say yes. Come on. Come on. Is that you, Lord? It's me. Come on. Is that you, Jesus? Come on. Is that you, Lord? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I know there's going to be some old funny duds who are going to stay in the boat. Don't you do that. I've never seen that before. We better not go there. We better not sing that. We better not act that way. You can stay dry all you want. I'm... I, I've, listen, I've seen enough of this. I've seen enough. I've been out here all my life. I've never seen him do this before. Peter has seen him raise the dead. He had seen Jesus transfigured before him to a bright shining light, seen Moses and Elijah, and it was Peter who said, Lord, this is good. This is good to be here. You know, what we should do is have church here. Build three tabernacles, have a good time to stay here, live here forever. But when he seen Jesus out there on the water, yes, I'm going. Hey, he all can stand there. Listen, you all don't have to come to prayer meeting. I'll pray. You all can sit back there and not worship. I'll worship. There's some of you who don't want to be a soul winner. I'll be a witness. Some of y'all want to stay in the boat and have religious service. I want to get out there to where Jesus is. I want to have revival. I want to change. Is there anybody who believes that? Is there any student out here tonight who says, you know what I'll do? I'll shout. I'll dance. I'll run. I'll do it. Jesus, let me get out there with you. Come on. Let's just take a little time to get crazy. It's just like taking a say, oh, I'm going to get out of the boat tonight. I've clapped this way my whole life. I've worshiped this whole way, but I want to step out. You better be calm. Peter, hey, hold on, Peter. You know what you might do out there? Fail. I'd rather fail trying than be some old fuddy dud who just hopes they make it. Listen, I don't just want to make it. I want to do everything I can, right? If he's here right now walking on water, I'm going to walk on water. If he's going to... 
Come on, young person. You better get you some faith. You better get you some faith and say, you know what? I'm not going to just be like everybody else. Someone say amen. amen. This is familiar waters. And this is a familiar presence. Is that you, Lord? It's me. If that's you out there, Lord, uh, can I come out there? Now, there's a storm going on. It's not that he's just seen a ghost and a storm's happening. He goes, I'd, like, I'd kind of like to get out there and do that. I mean, this is, the, this is the craziest time for him. I mean, he never tried to walk on water before. He had never, never tried to walk on water. He never had the idea to do that, but when he seen the Lord do it. You know what we need to do? We need to stop getting our, we got to get our eyes off of things that aren't doing anything. Come on, we got to get off our, get our eyes off of things that are not going to bring us any spiritual gratification. But if I can see what he's doing, and the only way you're going to get to see what he's doing is to get your eyes on him. The only way if you're going to see the dead raises to see is to get your eyes on him. If you're going to see revival in your youth group, you got to get your eyes on him. Get your eyes and your ears off the old footy dogs in the boat and say, Lord, I know that's you, and I want to come out there and do what you're doing. Greater works than these shall you do. Can I tell you, there's a greater revival. There's a greater move of the Holy Ghost for this generation, but you're going to have to get out. Someone say amen. Familiar waters. And it's a familiar voice. Lord, is that you? It's me. Come on. So he's, he's, hey guys, uh, I've never done this before. And uh, I, I, I know y'all think I'm crazy. And, and uh, he's out there. It's Peter. When Jesus says, Who's ever, what's everybody saying about me? And all these, all these Joes back there going, oh, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist come back from the dead. And Peter goes, I, I, you're, the, you're the son of God, right? The Christ? Jesus says, Simon Barjon, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven. You see, revelation comes when you're willing to listen and to get in his presence. Hey, that's him. I, that's him out there, right? Familiar. And this is where he grew up. This is where he's lived his whole life. Met his wife there. Started his business there. Everything. That's where he met the Lord. Is right there at those waters. Right there. And when he's seen the Lord just do all these great things. He says, let's come out here. And he starts walking on the waters. And the waves start getting more boisterous. When you step out in faith, the winds are going to get more boisterous. When you start walking out in faith, the storm is going to come. Are you really called to do that? Are you really, are you sure you should be doing that? And it's going to try to overthrow your faith. Are you sure you want to be apostolic? Are you sure you want to live this way? And then there's folks on college campuses and high school classrooms going, are you sure you really want to be that devoted and separate and con consecrated? And the rate and the waves start coming and you're not so sure anymore. And he gets his eyes off of him. I'm looking at the storm. And the Bible says, beginning to sink he's not sunk he's just beginning this is where he grew up he's known these waters his whole life he knows that voice he knows that presence but when he got his eyes off of Christ there's someone in this room you've been coming to church your whole life You've been around praise and worship services. You've been around thunderous, revelatory preaching your whole life. You've, been, you've grown up in Sunday school and altar calls. And now all of a sudden it just gets, it starts to get too familiar. And you've been in his presence before. You've, you've heard his voice before. You've felt his spirit before. He's overcome you before. You've stepped out in faith before. And all of a sudden it's just been a while. 
not sunk, beginning to sink. And you start sinking in familiar waters. I don't know if Peter ever had felt what it was like to sink in the Sea of Galilee. All he's known was floating and fishing and sailing. And here he is sinking. There's some young person, perhaps there's some who are not so young anymore. And familiarity has bred contentment. And you just come in and go through the motions. You're not so sure if this is all necessary anymore. I'm not so sure if I, the waves are coming. Do you really want to live that way? Do you really want to talk that way? Do you really want to cut that stuff off? Do you really want to be separate? And you're going, beginning to sink. Having trouble worshiping. Have, having trouble praying, having trouble being faithful. Now sports has your time and your energy. This boy or that girl, that relationship has all your focus and your eyes are off of him. Beginning. The water that you once had under your feet. The things that you used to have control over in your spirit are starting to creep up above your ankles now. You used to have authority over it. You used to walk in power over it. But when you got your eyes off of him, it's now at your calves. It's now at your knees. I've got it under control. I'll make it. I've got it. And the naysayers are in the boat. Told you. I knew you couldn't do it. You fool. You should have stayed in the boat with us. Beginning to sink to your waist. The critics, the criticism, the doubt, the fear. I feel him right now. It's now to your waist. Not sunk. I'm not sunk. I'm still coming. I'm still coming. I've come on a Friday night. I'm still here. I'm not sunk yet. I'm not dead yet. I'm not buried yet. I'm not drowned yet. I'm sinking. I wonder if somebody closed their eyes right now. And I start, I'd start taking inventory of where the water is. See where it's at. I've got control of this, Pastor. I've got control of this. Uh, she doesn't have all the authority over me. I can still do what I want. I can still, oh, I, I, I got it under control. I can still go there. I can still watch this. I can still partake of that. I'm under control. But the water's at your thighs. And now it's at your waist. And now it's coming up to your torso. You're not sunk. I'm not sunk yet. But you're beginning sink. It's an awful thing to go to hell from a church pew. It's an awful thing to go to hell from the choir loft. It's an awful thing to be on the drums and be backslidden. It's an awful thing to come in just because mom comes here. I'll just keep going and make her happy. No, 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 no. You're beginning to sink. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. I feel him now. He's ministering. He's walking through these pews right now. I know what it's like. I was there. I grew up in church. I know what it's like. I grew up in church. I was born in this. I was born in this. Born in this. Grew up in a pew. Grew up in Sunday school. I, all I wanted to do was play music. All I wanted to do was make my friends laugh. I just want to have a good time. Grew up in church. Got the Holy Ghost when I was 13. I, I know what it's all. I know what it's all about. But when I got to high school and I felt the pressure, I felt I felt the peer pressure, and I felt people talking about me and making fun of me, and I I, I was hiding my faith. I was I was like I talked about last night. I was in the door on Sunday and out of it on Monday, beginning to sink. And then I was few years after that, I felt God tugging at my soul. Something greater than this. There's something more than this. And I tried. I really tried. I felt that water coming up over my torso. And I began to sink. And it wasn't long. I was dabbling in drugs and alcoholism. And I wasn't even going to church anymore. And I'd come every once in a while and make my mom happy. And I was sinking. I was drowning. I was immersed in regret. I was immersed in missed opportunities. Drowning in doubt and fear. 
drowning in the opinions of others, drowning in peer pressure, drowning because I just couldn't keep my eyes on him. But something on a Saturday, the night before Easter, I walked home in a daze at three or four o'clock in the morning. And something, brothers and sisters, walked with me. And I just put my hand through the water and said, help me. Peter hadn't sunk yet. Perhaps it got to his neck. And he said, Lord, save me. This wasn't some ornate prayer. He didn't have time to get his KJV prayer on. He didn't have to go, Thou, Lordeth, saveth me. He didn't have some ornate prayer. All he could say was, Lord, save me. I don't know where you are right now, where the water is, but all you got to do is put your hand up to the top and say, Lord, I know you're there. Save me. I walked to an old-fashioned altar on that Sunday night of Easter. I walked to that, I walked to that altar 2005. I'd, I felt, I'm sure there were people there praying with me, Brother Taylor. I'm, I know there were, but I felt like I was walking by myself. I felt like I was all alone when I went to that altar, and I said, Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of sinking. I'm tired of drowning in this save me and there is something there is something that snatched me from what was drowning me and I guarantee if there would be somebody in this room right now and the familiar presence in that familiar water if you'll just say Lord save me he'll reach down to where you were he'll pick you up and he'll walk you right back to the boat he'll walk you right back to the boat like you never sunk before would you stand with me? Oh, I feel him in this room sinking. Come on, are you sinking? You're not sunk yet. You're not drowning yet, but you're sinking. Close your eyes. I want you to pray. Come on, young person. Come on, young man. I just want piano. I just want piano. I just want piano. I don't want any singers. I just want piano. I just want piano right now because you know what I want somebody to do? I want somebody to holler out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Lord, it's not going to be a song. It's not going to be a lyric, but God, it's going to be your grace that reaches down to where I'm drowning and it's going to pick me up. Come on. You're not dead yet. All you got to do is holler out and say, Lord, save me. Come on. That's all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm drowning. Lord, I'm falling. I'm familiar. This is too familiar anymore. More. I've got to get back to you. I've got to get back to you. And you know what he'll do, young lady? You know what he'll do, young man? He'll pick you up. He'll walk you. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Somebody. Somebody. Come on. Leave the peer pressure behind. Leave the criticism behind. Leave the doubt. Why did that? Why did you doubt? Why did you have unbelief? When you start to sink, faith won't sink you, but unbelief will. Would you pray? Come on, young person. He'll reach to where you are. He'll reach right to where you are. doesn't matter where you are. Maybe you've been to church your whole life. It's been a while since you've spoken another tongue. Maybe it's been a while since you talked to him in the spirit. Maybe it's been a while since you felt the moving of the Holy Ghost upon your soul. And he's just way, he's just like, because it's winds and waves crashing upon your heart. He'll do it right now. All you got to do is say, Lord, save me. Lord, save me in my present condition. Would you pray? He'll fill somebody with the Holy Ghost right now. He'll restore unto you your joy he'll restore unto you your assurance in him but you gotta just say Lord save me that's the prayer you have to pray Lord save me come on he'll throw the lifesaver out there to you come on he'll throw the lifesaver out there to you that's it that's it come on come on don't leave here until you cry out to him Put your hand up above the waters and say, save me, Lord, save me. Won't you pray with somebody? 
I'm going to pray with somebody in the Holy Ghost. There's somebody who's been sinking. Somebody been sinking. You can make it. Come on, if I can make it, you can make it. Come on, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. <laughs> that's it, young person. That's it, young person. Maybe there's some things you need to leave at an altar tonight. Maybe there's some things you got to leave at an altar tonight. Come on, maybe it's the fear of what everybody thinks about you. Leave it at an altar. Come on, maybe it's unbelief. You better leave it at an altar. Come on. He's here to restore. salvation move grace move come on it's the grace of God has appeared unto all men he's appearing unto you teaching us to deny ungodliness come on something you need to leave at the altar some of y'all need to leave some entertainment at the altar some of y'all need to leave some relationships at the altar so we need to leave some peer pressure at the altar. Hallelujah, sinking. Don't sink in familiar waters of the church. Don't sink in the church. Don't die lost in the church. Come on, he was willing to reach you right where you are, young lady. Come on, young man. Come on, young man. Don't sink. Cry out. Come on, keep praying. Come on, he's lifting somebody out. He's lifting somebody out right now. The lifeline's been thrown out. He's lifting you up. Come on, lift him up. Let him pick you up. Come on, let him pick you up. I feel him. He's here. I feel his angels in this room right now. Lift, he's lifting you up. He's lifting you up. He's lifting you up. Cry out to him. He'll save you. He'll restore you. somebody else to pray with. Maybe somebody you know just needs a hand. They just need an encouraging, an encouraging word. We're going to make it together. Come on. We're going to make it. You're going to make it. I'm with you. Come on, I'm with you. Come on back into the boat. Come on back into the church. Come on. We'll dry you off. <laughs> we'll help you back. Come 
on, the Spirit's making utterances. Come on, the Spirit's praying through somebody. Somebody who is sinking is going to be restored. Somebody who is sinking is going to be restored. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's press a little bit harder in the spirit. God, we need you. Oh God, I'm nothing without you.
closer to you, Jesus. I need more of you, Jesus. I don't care if I have to step out on those waters. I'll do it if it means I'm getting closer to you. God, just don't let me sink, Lord. Don't let me sink, God. Don't let me sink into my own pit of sin, God. I need you, Father. I'm stepping out on faith, Jesus, because I know if I just get to you, you'll save me. I know if I'll just get to you, you'll take care of me. You'll take care of my problems. I just need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I've got to have you, Lord. I can't live without you, Jesus. I can't breathe without you, Jesus. I can't live without you, Jesus. I can't even make it without you, God. give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's give it with all our might. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Haven't we had an awesome time these last two nights? It's been incredible. Thank you, Brother Whitley, for ministering to us through the Holy Ghost. It's been awesome, awesome, awesome. Who's ready to go have fun and fellowship? Who's ready to go play some sports? Well, hallelujah. Let's pray over the food and we'll, we'll be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this place, for speaking to us. God, put it in our hearts. Seal it in us, God. God, let it grow into good fruit, Lord Jesus. God, put this word in our hearts and help us to live it every day, God. We need you every single day. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless the food and the fellowship. I thank you for it. I give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be dis-